Hey there, this is Brandon with Autoslide. So today we're gonna to be doing an installation example video. We're also gonna be doing an Autoslide system unboxing. And we're gonna show you each part and each component of the unit and describe exactly what it does. So first, we're gonna go through our unboxing section. After that, we're gonna show you how to use our cutout seat template, which is gonna be linked in the description of this video to kind of predict how the Autoslide system is gonna mount and if you're gonna to have to do something like sim out the track or sim down the system, then we're going to cover preparing for the installation and then finally installation and programming of the system, either through the built-in dip switches in the Autoslide unit or through the Autoslide app. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and begin by unboxing our Autoslide system. Now here I have a white standard Autoslide unit. This means it has a maximum pull force of about 12 pounds or so, and it does not have a lock built into it. So. I'm gonna start by pulling open my tabs very carefully. Let's go ahead and open this system up. Alrighty, so you can see at the very start, the very top right here, we have this test strip. So this Velcro test strip should only be used if you have a standard system. It is a 12 pound measuring tool. So you loop this around your door handle Tighten the Velcro, just like that. And you use it to pull the door open and closed three times. Now, every time that you close the door, you wanna make sure you close the door into the weather stripping, into the weather seal. If this, if this uh, strip breaks like that, then it means that it is most likely not going to work with a standard system. You wanna make sure that you have an elite unit on that type of door or a multi-drive. But if it's able to open and close the door three times like this without breaking, then you're going to be fine. All right, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and proceed on to my auto slide system. So first right here, we have our two track segments. Now, every auto slide kit includes two of these 20 inch tracks by default, and they actually conjoin at the ends with this railing system right here. So just go ahead and slide the end of one track into the end of the other. And it makes this joining bracket, kind of like a puzzle piece. And now you have your track segment. So I'm gonna go ahead and unjoin that and set this off to the side. We're gonna tackle that later. Next up, we have our L-shaped mounting adapter bracket. So this mounting adapter is optional. You don't necessarily have to use it. If you're gonna be mounting the system to the underside of uh, your door header, so a flat horizontal surface, then you do not necessarily need to use this. You could still use it for reinforcement if you wanted to. But if you're mounting this system to a vertical surface like a wall, then this bracket is essential because it would let you attach the bracket to the wall and then attach your system to the underside of this L bracket. And we have some example diagrams we're gonna show you later on in the video. This bag of nuts and bolts right here is also meant to be used with this L bracket. So I'll go ahead and set that right here. We have our tool kit. And we have another screw packet here. So a quick note in regards to the screws, before you mount the system, you wanna make sure that you check what type of material you're going into. So for example, on a wooden door, you're not gonna to wanna to use self tappers like what's included here because that's gonna strip out the wood. You're not gonna get a very good um, grip onto the door material. So if you're using, um, if you're going into a wooden door panel or a wooden door header, you're gonna to wanna to use wood screws like this. But if you're going into something like metal, aluminum, or vinyl, self tappers like these are absolutely perfect. Another quick note I'm gonna make here is on your track end caps right here. So two of these are included with every single system. It's up to you if you wanna use them. Personally, I don't suggest using them. They're great if you need reinforcement for the track at the ends, but they do take away a little bit of opening width just because of how much space it takes up to um, slide this onto the ends of the track here. So again, these track end caps are optional. You do not need to use them unless you want to. All right, next up, we got our wall buttons right here, our wireless touch buttons. I'll go ahead and open these up real quick. So, 
These are capacitive touch buttons. If I just touch the surface, they'll go ahead and activate the system. You're not gonna see anything coming on right now because I don't have the batteries in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the batteries in there later on, and this is what we're gonna be using to activate the system. Now, every auto slide kit includes two of these wall buttons by default. Alrighty. Next up, this white box right here is going to contain our power pack. Now, this power pack is going to differ between a standard system and an elite auto slide system. So a standard system is gonna have a power pack plugging directly into the wall outlet. It's gonna be a single cable that leads from this power pack, this transformer, to the power port on the side of the auto slide system. The auto slide elite unit is gonna have a different type of power pack it's gonna be a power pack that at the moment is available in black only, and the transformer is in the middle with one high voltage cable going to the closest wall outlet and one low voltage cable like this going to the auto slide system. And then lastly, we have our main auto slide unit right here. So this auto slide system, I'm just gonna very gently slide out of this packaging. And then to open this unit up, I'm going to peel back this cover right here by grabbing it at the end and just peeling in that direction away from the base. I'm gonna have one hand grab, uh, gripping the base of the unit right here, and then one hand gripping the cover right here. And I'm just gonna pry it open. Like that. Now if you find this is difficult, then you can also loosen, don't take them out all the way, but you can loosen the two screws on either end cap, either this end cap, or you can loosen the two screws on this end cap right here. That's going to let you bend this end cap a little bit. It's going to let the cover come right off. But in my case, I'm going to go ahead and just pull, the cover comes right off like that. So looking at this system, I can tell right away this is going to be a standard non-locking system and I can tell that by looking at the motor barrel. So if you have a medium gray barrel, then that tells me it's a standard. And if it terminates in a black plastic end cap like this with nothing else, that's a non-locking motor. Now we do have an example of a standard locking motor and an elite eye locking motor. So the standard locking motor has a chrome extension right here. This chrome extension is actually the lock. It's a built-in dynamic braking lock that locks the motor pinion in place and keeps it from turning. And then the elite motor, you can tell because it has a dark gray cast iron looking barrel. So I can tell right away this is an elite eye lock because it has the cast iron barrel instead of the medium gray, and it has this chrome portion right here, which tells me that it has the lock built into it. So the standard motor, again, it has a maximum pull force of 12 pounds, and then your elite motor has a maximum pull force of about 55 pounds. Alrighty, so in this next section, I'm gonna cover how to kind of analyze your door, plan out how your system is going to mount and figure out what you're gonna to have to do in regards to making the system fit your door in regards to simming out the track or simming down the unit body or anything like that. So in the description of this video, we have this document linked. This is incredibly handy when it comes to previewing how your system is going to install. If you already have a system, that's even better. You can hold the system up to the door but you can use this before you purchase to kind of plan out how everything's going to mount. And as you can see, these cross sections right here, which you can go ahead and cut out with a pair of scissors, line up exactly with the system. So this is gonna be an exact cross section to scale of how the system is going to mount on your door. So what you'll do is you go ahead and cut out those pieces. And once you have that, it's gonna be looking something kind of like this. So that's our auto slide system and that's our auto slide track. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just hold this up to the door and figure out how it's gonna mount. Now, my blue lines right here, 
are my mounting holes. So I know that I'm gonna to have to put a screw right through there. And on my track, I'm gonna to have to put a screw right through there. So I'm gonna start with like a default configuration, which is kind of like this, where my track is just engaged with the wheel. And I'm gonna hold it up like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold this up to the door here. Now I have this little underside of this ridge that I'm gonna mount my auto slide to. So let me just go ahead and hold this up and you can see right away that it could work, but this screw hole right here is pretty low. It's pretty close to where my glass is terminating on this door. I'm not really too sure how high my glass is going up. And if I put my screw in at this height, there's a chance I could damage the glass. Obviously don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and try flipping this track around because you could either install the track like this, or you could install the track like that. I know it's a little bit hard to see probably on the other side, but if I, if I install my track like this, I'm gonna go ahead and hold my track back up to my cutout seat now. Try to line up as best as I can. Well, you can see we're more or less good. So my screw hole is right around there, which is gonna be very high up into the door. So there's no chance I'm gonna be going into the glass. I have plenty of room to screw up into my door header trim piece right here. Now, one thing I'm noticing right away is that there's a pretty big gap between the surface of my panel and the edge of my track. Even if I go ahead and slide my track out a little bit, which we don't really recommend, you wanna have as much engagement as possible between your track and your wheel. But even if I have like about 50% of my wheel engaged, you can see that I'm still out from the surface of the door by a pretty fair bit because this track to mount it would be all the way back here it's not going to make contact with my motor pinion so what i'm going to have to do now that i did this test i'm going to have to sim my track out from the surface of this panel to make my track meet the wheel and since we actually have a system here i'm going to go ahead and just hold the system up to the door and you'll be able to see exactly what i mean so I'm gonna go ahead and move this track right about here, hold my system up to where it's gonna mount. And you can see if I were to install this track directly to the face of the door, that track is barely, is not interfacing at all with my motor pinion. So I'm gonna to have to push this track out like this to get it to engage. All right, now a couple of notes before we proceed. So the first one is gonna be how to use this Velcro test strip. Now, again, if you have an Elite system already, you do not need to use this test strip. If you received one in the kit anyway, you can just go ahead and toss it. But if you have a standard system, we highly recommend, in fact, we require that you use this test strip before you install the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and loop it around my door handle. I'm going to attach the Velcro, make sure that it's nice and snug and tight. I'm gonna start with my door fully closed into my weather seal because some weather seals are um, tighter than others. Make sure your door is fully into the seal. I'm going to open this door at a nice, moderate, steady pace. Close this door. Again, all the way into the seal. Open it again. Close it again. Open again and close again. And you might have been able to hear, I was definitely able to hear that the Velcro was straining a little bit, but it did not break. If that's the case, then you're gonna be absolutely fine. Now, if you wanna double check, you can also get a fist scale or a luggage scale at your local hardware store, attach the hook to your door handle, use it to open and close the door a few times, just like I just did. And if that reading goes to uh, 12 pounds or above, then you definitely wanna go with an elite system instead of a standard system. Another thing to take into account is uh, changes in environment and temperature. So let's say that summertime, everything is nice and you know it's warm, this door is able to slide very smoothly and easily. But if you know for a fact that your door gets harder to slide open and close during winter time, and let's say you do this test in the summer and your door registers about maybe 10 pounds, 11 pounds or so, then you're right on that brink. You should probably estimate and add on maybe an additional two to four pounds for winter time when that drag weight increases and everything gets colder and tighter. 
and that means you're going to probably want to go with an elite anyway now the next thing we're going to cover is the glass in the door so obviously you do not want to tap into the glass of the door that's going to instantly sadder this and you can tell how far the glass goes up into your door panel usually by looking for the seams so on the front surface of the door here i don't really see any seam markings but if i look on the back side right here then you're going to be able to see this seam marking going all the way up and down the door it actually goes all the way up and it goes up and then at the top right here it actually goes across and you can see exactly how high up this glass goes into the door this might be on either side of the door some doors have this some doors have it but kind of hide it so if you're uncertain just check with your door manufacturer but usually you're going to be able to tell right away just by checking either side of the panel and looking for that seam line Alrighty, so now we're going to go ahead and get started with the installation process of our auto slide system now just so y'all know of course this door that i'm going to be installing onto is a right-handed door but if you follow these instructions exactly this will work for either a right-handed door or a left-handed door it does not matter what orientation your door is the only time that can sometimes come into play is if you're installing this system onto a barn door or a pocket door or if you're floor mounting the system, I want to make sure that the unit is not sticking out into the opening of the door. But if you're installing onto the top of a patio door, then you do not need to physically rehand the system or install it in a different way for a right opening versus a left opening door. And another thing, before we begin, I'm just going to open and close my door manually a couple of times. And I'm going to make sure that it slides smoothly. What I'm looking for here so I'm trying to feel for any spots where the door is getting stuck. I want to make sure that there's no debris anywhere in my door track. I want to make sure that my door track is not warped. If it is, this will throw off the system. For example, if I'm trying to, let's say I have my system already installed and I activate it, it opens the door, it closes back up, but there's a spot where the system gets tight or where the door gets tight. The system is going to feel that resistance. It's going to engage a safety reversal door will just open right back up by itself. That's something that you obviously want to avoid. So make sure that your door is sliding smoothly and that the rollers and the hardware for your door are all in good condition. If they're not, it's probably a good idea to get the door serviced or at least cleaned and lubricated before you proceed with the installation. Another thing I like to suggest is instead of just opening and closing the door from the handle, open and close your door at the top. So your auto slide system usually is going to be mounted at the top of the door. Sometimes door panels can act differently when they're pulled at the top versus at the middle where the handle is. So to simulate your auto slide system opening and closing the door, ground the panel at the top and do the exact same test. Open it all the way, close it as far as you can. Obviously you're not gonna be able to close it all the way. And then open and again, just feel for any spots where the door is getting stuck or any bounce of friction or resistance. But this door here is sliding perfectly smooth like butter, so we're just gonna go ahead and proceed with the installation now. So first thing I'm gonna do is measure how much I need to cut my track. I'm gonna close this door all the way as far as it can into my weather seal. And then at the leading edge of my panel, which is the edge that is closed into the seal, I'm going to make a mark sewing the border of the panel. So let's just say as an example, if my weather seal came out to here, then I would wanna put my mark right here. But in this case, my seal comes out to here this far. So I'm gonna put my mark as far as the exposed panel. So that's it right there. You wanna make sure that you don't put your mark at the very edge of the panel. You wanna put your mark at the border of the exposed panel width when the door is fully closed. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process with opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the door all the way. And then this door right here has a door stop, so it's not gonna actually open and touch this. But in some cases, this is a little bit more rare, doors will have a seal on the open jam. So when this panel opens all the way, sometimes there's gonna be a seal covering it up, maybe it's to like this far. If that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to put a mark, again, at the limit of your exposed panel width, not at the very end, but of your exposed width, right? But in this case here, 
This is not going into a seal. It is totally exposed when it's as far open as it can go. So if I want, I'll just go ahead and make a mark at the very edge, but basically my mark is the edge of the panel. So what we just done is we've measured the total exposed width of the door panel. This is going to be the width of the panel that is exposed at any point in time, whether the door is open or closed. And this measurement from this mark to this mark is going to be what you want to cut your track segment to. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my track segments right here. And then again, like we sewed earlier, these track segments joining by slide into each other are joined by sliding into each other. So go ahead and slide my track pieces together, just like that. And then once that's done, I'm going to hold it up with my pencil to my door. And I'm going to mark where my exposed width is. Now, you're going to want to leave the edge that is closer towards the center of the door uncut. So I'm going to put one end of the track or I'm going to remember which side my track is facing, because remember when we planned this, we're going to have our track with the flans facing up to keep it out of the way of the glass. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this up to the door. I'm going to align one end of the track with my mark that is closest to the center of the door. So it's not going to be my leading edge of the door panel. It's going to be my middle edge right here. So align that and then make your mark on your track to match where your mark on your leading edge is. So for me, that's gonna be right about here. And the reason we're doing this is because we wanna keep the screw hole right here on the end of the track. Um, so that way we can have some reinforcement on this track to the motor wheel when the door is fully closed. So now I've gone ahead and I've made my mark. I know exactly how much of the track I'm gonna cut off to ensure that this track matches the exposed width of the panel. And we're gonna go ahead and make our cut. Alrighty, so now I've gone ahead and cut my track. Before I do anything else, I'm going to try to plan out what position I'm going to mount my system, my motor, my um, unit base, unit body. So I'm going to start with the two marks that I made on my door panel. So again, we have one mark all the way over here and one mark all the way over here that we made earlier. I'm going to close my door all the way into the seal. And then looking at the mark that I made at the center edge of the door panel, the middle edge of the door, I'm going to make a matching mark on the trim of my door right here. So my mark was right here. I'm going to make a mark right here. If my mark was an inch further to the right, I'd make a mark right here. But just make sure that your mark is as aligned as possible with your mark that you made earlier. Same thing for the other side. I'm going to open my door as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to make a mark on my trim, my door trim matching the position of the mark that I made earlier on my leading edge of the sliding panel. So you want that again to be as horizontally aligned as possible or vertically aligned as, uh, sorry, horizontally aligned as possible. So now I have my two marks. I have one mark right there. And I have one mark right there. These are going to be approximately in the center of your door. The guiding rule is that I just need my motor wheel to be in between these two lines. I don't want my motor wheel to be too far to eat. If it is, there's a chance that I could risk um, the motor wheel going off the track, not having very good engagement. Usually you're gonna wanna go right into the center in between these two lines, but if it's a little bit off towards one side, that's fine. Just don't get too close to either. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So if you take a look at our auto slide system right here, and there's our motor pinion. I'm just going to hold it up to the door I'm gonna make sure that this wheel does not get too close to either this line or to that line. So again, I'm gonna go probably right around the middle. So it's gonna go right about there. And that's pretty much all that, it, that comes down to, to planning out where you're gonna mount your auto slide system um, in regards to how far to the left or right you want it on the door. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with drill mounting my auto slide system to my door header. Now again, you want to make sure that you're using the right type of screw to go into your door header material. So for example, with this door, I have a vinyl material on my frame and on my panel. 
but my door header right here is actually wood and um, or drywall, but it's wood. So you wanna make sure that you're using a wooden screw to go into that header. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my first screw in now. Once you have one screw in there, it should be able enough to uh, hold the system up. And we're gonna go ahead and put the next screw in. And there are three mounting holes along the back flange of the system that are gonna serve as your main screws or screw holes to hold the system up to the door. And as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the back edge of my system is aligned with the back edge of my trim. So this unit should be flush to your trim piece right here. You want this motor wheel to be as close to the surface of the panel as possible. So don't try to put your system further out from your door panel than necessary. Make sure that your system is close to the panel as far as it can go without this motor wheel dropping too low. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my last screw in now. There we go. I'll tighten everything up. That should be it. All right, so now that our auto slide unit body is mounted onto the top of the door, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with mounting my track. So like we talked about earlier in the video, on this door in particular, we found out that if I were to mount the track directly to the panel, like ideally that I'd wanna do, it's not gonna be able to meet that motor wheel. So I'm gonna to have to sim the track out slightly to make sure that my track is going to engage with my wheel right there. And to fix this, I have this sim piece, this wooden piece, that I'm gonna put behind my track, and it's gonna sim my track out enough to meet my wheel. Now, ideally you want as much of your track and your wheel as engaged as possible. You can see there's still some width to my wheel right here that is not being engaged with my track, but that's fine, as long as at least 50% of your motor wheel, preferably at least two thirds of your motor wheel is engaged with this track, and that should be enough. As for the sim piece, I'm just using a regular wooden piece right here that is cut to the approximate same size and dimensions as my track segment. But you could also use plastic sims. Um, you could also even use like a metal bar, something that'll match the look of your door a lot better. You could take this, you could paint it white, but you could pretty much use whatever you need here as long as it's stable and you're able to tap through it. So now I've gone ahead and I grabbed my track screws and also off camera, I've drilled a couple of holes into my sim piece here to make it a little bit easier for me to mount the track. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my track up to approximately where it's going to mount on my door panel. And I'm going to take this first mounting hole that is closest to my wheel that's easily accessible. So this one right here, I'm going to open my door a little bit so that that screw hole is as close to the motor as possible while still being accessible with my drill. So once I have it right around there, and remember I'm keeping my track lined up with the marks that I made earlier. So the back edge of my track is lined up with my um, panel middle line, middle edge mark that I made before. So I'm gonna go ahead and push up with my, with my hand on the track, push up to the motor wheel with one hand. And as you're pushing up, put in your um, screw, your track screw with your other hand into this mounting hole right here. Now the reason we're doing this is we're gonna be using the motor wheel to level out the track. The number one installation issue we see is people do not install this track tight enough to the wheel. If this track does not have good enough engagement with the motor wheel, the motor wheel is going to slip, and it's going to grind on the track, and it's going to throw the system off calibration. So 
You do not want to use anything like a level when you're mounting this track. All you have to do is make sure you're pushing up on the track to the wheel at a, with a decent amount of pressure and then put your first screw in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. With this screw right here. One second. Again, pushing up with one hand, making sure my track is aligned, and put in my screw. Perfect. All right, so once you've had your uh, first screw put in, I'm gonna go ahead and slide the door open a little bit further until my next screw hole is again as close as possible to the motor wheel while still being accessible with my drill bit. So now, same exact process. I'm going to push up with one hand, pushing up on the underside of this track to my wheel, and with my other hand, go in with one of my track screws right here and attach it to the door panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my screw started first. And then before it goes into the vinyl of the door, I'm gonna be going pushing up with one hand and going in with the other. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and I put in screws in the remainder of my mounting holes. And again, what I've done is for each hole, I've gone ahead and slid the door a little bit further open until my hole is right next to my um, motor wheel, but still accessible push up on the track, put in the screw, and then repeat that process for every single hole all the way through. You wanna make sure that you have a screw in every single hole in the track. It needs to be well supported all the way throughout the door's range of motion. Another quick tip on this, when you're um, pushing up on the track, as you're putting each screw in, try to be pushing up with the same amount of force. You don't wanna have it where it's going super tight when it's close to one screw hole, and I know the screw hole is a little bit loose because then you're gonna get some spots where it's gonna be a little bit higher resistance, higher drag, and spots where it loosens out. It's gonna mess up with the system a little bit. So just try to have the same amount of pressure on the track or on the wheel from the track all the way through. So now I'm on my very last um, screw here, or second to last screw. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to where it's close enough to the wheel. And I'm gonna take my screw right here and go ahead and put it on in. Push up. Perfect. Now, one other thing that I wanna make note of is in some cases, since we're using some uh, pan head screws here, these screws can rub against the end cap if it's a very, very tight fit, especially if you're sitting out the track. If that's the case, try to print it out in advance. You might need to use countersunk screws instead of pan head screws to mount this track to the door panel. But in my case, I'm pretty much good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this door all the way or almost all the way until my very last screw hole, and I'll get off the ladder here so y'all can see, but my very, last screw hole right there i'm going to make that as close to the motor wheel as i can without it being inaccessible so probably right about there is as close as it's going to get and just go ahead and put a screw in there right now and then with this one i'm going to try to keep it just at approximately the same level as the rest of the track Maybe push up on it just very slightly, but you don't want to go too high. And just kind of make your best guess. Just give that a try. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So now 
that our track has been mounted securely to the system. I'm going to go ahead and plug this system in and we're going to cover how to program it in two different ways. First, we're going to cover how to program it with um, the physical dip switches that are in the system and then we'll cover how to pair and program it using the Autoslide app. Now, before we program our Autoslide system, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure it's connected um, to power. So I've already gone ahead and plugged in my power cable right here. The power port is always gonna be on the left side of the unit. You can go ahead and just stuff this cable into that little channel right there. Get nice and flush. And then it'll be up to you to figure out how you want to feed out this cable. Sometimes you can use some cable channel to conceal the cabling. In my case, I just have it going up and I have a hole up there and I have it plugged into the wall outlet right over there. And now if you look in the internals of the system, your main power switch is going to be this red power switch right here that is behind these two cables right here. So if I flip this power switch right now, the system is going to be powered on for the first time. On the left side of the control panel, you have your utility ports. So I have my motor information, my primary power cable, my backup battery. If I have a backup battery, if I don't have a backup battery, then this port is gonna be empty. And then my lock. If I have a locking system, there's going to be a cable going into the lock port, which is the bottommost one, but I don't have a locking system here. So these two ports, both battery and lock, are empty. And then on the right side of my control panel are my sensor inputs. I have my inside sensor, which is like a wall button, or sorry, an inside wall button or an inside motion sensor. I have my outside sensor input right below that, which is kind of like an outside wall button, outside motion sensor. And then I have my pet sensor input for proximity tags or infrared sensors. And then at the very bottom, I have my stack sensor input. Now this doesn't really apply too much for a single sliding panel door, it's very, very rarely used. But what that does is it starts, stops, and reverses the door when it's in blue mode. And we go into more detail on this on a different video, which I'll link in the description. Alrighty, so now that my system is mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and start programming using the dip switches. So I'm always going to start with my system powered off, door about halfway open. If you want, it can be just like a little bit open, about a foot or so, but just in the open position or halfway open position. And then I'm also gonna have all of my dip switches, which are these eight switches at the bottom right here. I'm gonna have all of them flipped off. Off is going to be towards the front of the control panel. On is going to be towards the door panel, um, away from the front of the control panel. So all of my switches are flipped off, which is towards me, away from the door. I'm gonna go ahead and power the system on. And then what I'm looking for here is I'm trying to see what direction the door is going in. So you can tell right away the door went to close. So I'm gonna power it off before it gets all the way closed. Now, whenever the system first powers on, it should always, always start to close the door right away. Now, let's say that, for example, this door was, instead of being right-handed, it was a left-handed door. I power this system on, the door starts to open instead of close. If that's the case, the first thing you wanna do, power it off and turn on dip switch one. So I'm gonna flip dip switch one on towards the door, just as an example. And now when I power this system back on, you're gonna see that it starts to open the door instead of close. Basically, all dip switch one does is it changes the polarity of the system to set it for either a right-handed or left-handed door. So in my case, I have a right-handed door. I'm gonna go ahead and flip dip switch one back to off, so that way it starts to close as soon as I power it on. So power it on, all of my switches are off. The door is now gonna to go to the closed position. And then as long as my track is tight enough to my wheel, it should stay closed. Perfect. Now, in some cases, the track, if it's too loose to the wheel, you're gonna have issues with grinding. Usually that pops up as soon as you power it on, it's gonna to start to close the door, and then once it gets to the maximum closed position, you're gonna hear this really loud grinding noise. If that's the case, power the system off immediately. If you leave the system to grind for a sustained amount of time, 
that can cause damage to the teeth of the track or the teeth of the motor wheel, or in worst case scenario, even some of the internal gears of the motor. You not want to let the system grind for longer than just a couple of seconds at most. So if that happens, power off the system and then increase pressure between the track and the motor wheel. Some easy ways to do that, find your door's height adjustment screws and raise your door panel up so your track is tighter to the wheel. You could also try to stuff something above the system that could be washers, it could be a thin sim, anything that you want to push this whole unit body down tighter to the track. But one way or another, if you have that grinding issue, the only way to resolve that is to increase the amount of pressure between your track and your motor wheel. But in my case, the door was able to close and settle just fine, which means we have enough pressure between the wheel and the track, so I'm good to proceed with programming. So, in my case, the unit defaulted into green mode. Most of the time, your system's going to default into green mode when you first power it on. If it's in any other mode, for example, if it's in red mode or blue mode or pet mode, I recommend just going ahead and switching it over to green mode. It's kind of like the automatic human access default mode that is most commonly used. And that's gonna be the one that we're gonna program first. So our first dip switch right here, the same one that I was talking about earlier to control whether it's right-handed or left-handed is going to be how we program the system's opening with. So right now I have dip switch one in the off position. To program my human opening width, I'm going to reverse dip switch one two times. So right now it's off. I'm going to flip dip switch one on and then flip it immediately back off. Now, if you had a left-handed door instead of a right-handed door, then it would be the reverse. You should have dip switch one in the on position and then you'd be flipping dip switch one off and then immediately back on. So when you're at this process, or at this point in the process, just reverse dip switch one two times from whatever it's currently set to. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip dip switch one on, the door's gonna start moving, and then immediately off. And now door closes back up, and now we've begun the learning process. So at this point in time, the door is going to slowly open all the way until it reaches the door stop, and then it's going to close all the way, open about a foot kind of fast, and then close. And while it's doing this, make sure that your wheel does not slip on the track, make sure you're not hearing any sort of grinding noise. Try to take a look at the door's motion, make sure it's not getting stuck at certain spots, and that's doing a nice, clean, smooth, glide open and glide closed. So now we're going into the closed position here, and then it's going to open kind of fast, for about a foot or two, perfect. And it's gonna close back up and it should stay closed. Now, if for any reason it doesn't, if it goes back open and closed again, it might be that it slipped a little bit when it was trying to learn the, the distances and it mats up. Just let it go a couple of cycles, see what happens. If it still is having trouble with finalizing its programming, go ahead and reach that to us directly. But in our case here, it just programmed its opening with perfectly, so I'm gonna go ahead and try an activation. So these buttons right here for inside sensor, outside sensor, and pet sensor are going to serve as my manual inputs for these sensor inputs. Basically, if I press the button for inside sensor, it's the same thing as if I press an inside wall button. Same thing for outside sensor. I press that, same thing as if I press an outside wall button. If I press pet sensor, it's the same thing as if I press a, um, or if I activate the system through a pet sensor like a dog tag or an infrared. So in my case, I'm in green mode, which is a human only mode. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about the modes and their different uses, then we're gonna have another video, which we'll link in the description as well, going through each of the uh, four unit modes and talking about which sensor ports work in which modes. But in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and activate inside sensor and the door should open. Beautiful. Now, one thing I'd like you guys to see is when it opens right to here, I'm gonna activate it again. It is stopping sort of where my door stop is. Now, when we programmed it, the door did open all the way to this point, 
but it is built into the auto slide system to stop about half an inch short before it gets to this maximum open position. That is intentional. It's to keep the door from hitting this door stop and losing calibration. So if your door, when you do your test activation by pressing inside sensor, if it actually hits that door stop, that means something is wrong and you're probably gonna wanna try to reprogram your opening width and make sure that your wheel is not slipping on the track. So now that I've programmed our human opening width, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my next opening width which is going to be stacker or blue mode or hold open. So I'm gonna go ahead and press my mode button one time. That's gonna put it into blue mode. And now this door should open all the way, but it's not. And that's because I haven't programmed my blue mode opening width yet. Blue mode runs off of a separate programmed width than the human opening width. So now that it's in blue mode and the door is still, I'm gonna go ahead and program my blue mode width the exact same way I programmed my human opening width. I'm gonna flip dip switch one back and forth, reverse it two times. So dip switch one is in the off position right now. I'm gonna flip it on and then immediately back off. So you're gonna see, as you saw, the door um, started to move open. Now it's going closed. I'm just gonna let it do its thing here. It's gonna do more or less the same thing as before, where it's going to open all the way very slowly and then close all the way very slowly. And just like when we were programming the human um, opening width, you wanna make sure that your wheel is not skipping on the track at any point, especially when it reaches full open or full closed. Again, if it does, power off the system immediately. You do not wanna let it grind for any longer than it has to. So now it should be almost done with its programming here. Now, one difference is when we are programming the human opening width, at this point, it quickly opened about a foot and then closed back up. It is not going to do that when you're programming blue mode. So once it does one open and one closed, that's pretty much all it, all it needs to do. So now I'm gonna go ahead and change my mode into any other mode. So just as an example, I'll put it into green, let it settle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put it into blue. And now the door is going to open all the way and stay open. Perfect. And now as, as long as it's in blue mode, it's just gonna stay open until I take it out of blue mode, which I'm gonna do right now. So red mode is the next on the four operating modes for the system. Red mode goes off of the human opening width as well. So there's really nothing special that we have to program for red mode. Once you program your human opening width in green, red mode will already be set up. So really the only opening width that we have left to program is our pet opening width. Now this is completely optional. If you are using this for convenience or accessibility and you don't have a pet, you do not need to set up pet mode with this system. But let's just say for an example, you have a dog or a cat and you want them to be able to activate the system with the pet sensor, then you need to have pet mode programmed. So pet mode is gonna be a little bit different from the other modes. Firstly, I'm not gonna be able to access pet mode until I program my pet opening width. If I try to press the button one time, it just skips pet mode and goes straight back into green. Secondly, the previous opening widths were programmed with dip switch one. This one's gonna be programmed with dip switch three. It's gonna be dip switch three on, and then back off. Regardless of your door's orientation, right-handed or left-handed, dip switch three on and then immediately off is going to start the pet learn um, process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna flip dip switch three on and nothing is happening, which is actually fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip dip switch three back off. There we go. So all the lights are flashing and it's starting to open slowly. And the difference here is I'm going to brace it where I want it to stop for my pet. So we usually recommend at least 16 inches. It gives the door enough time to speed up and slow down, but you can really make it whatever you want. Just kind of play around with the width. This might take some trial and error to figure out what works best for your door. So what I did just there was I braced the door with my foot. You could also brace it with your foot and your hand if you like. The door just felt my resistance and pushed against my foot a little bit. It went back to closed. And so now our pet mode is programmed 
and you can see we are now in pet mode thanks to this orange light right here behind the pet paw. So I'm going to press my button to activate my pet sensor and the door should open to the pet with. And there we go. And the cool thing about pet mode is that when you're in pet mode, both your pet input and your human input will work. So if I activate a human input, like inside or outside sensor, the door is going to open all the way to the human opening with. Now the last step when it comes to setting up your settings is the open time dial. So the open time dial controls how long the door stays open for after it's been activated. Right now I have this at the very minimum, so all the way clockwise. This means the door is going to open up after an activation, wait zero seconds, and then immediately close back up just like you saw before. If I have this at maybe almost the maximum setting, but not quite maximum, it's going to be about 24 seconds. So activate it with a wall button or something, door opens, waits 24 seconds, closes back up. But if I have this at the maximum setting, so all the way counterclockwise as far as it can go, that means it's going to become a toggle or kind of like an infinite delay. So I press the human input one time, the door is going to open to the human width, and this is for pet mode, green mode, or red mode. Door just stays open indefinitely until I activate it again, and then it toggles the door back closed. This does not apply to the pet input. If you have a pet sensor and your open time dial is at the very maximum setting, then when a pet activates it, it's still gonna be going off of a 24 second timer. So pet activates it, door opens, pet stops activating it, it waits 24 seconds, and then closes back up. So now that we've had our AutoSlide system programmed and operational, I'd like to go into some of the different functionalities of the eight dip switches located at the bottom of the control panel. And just so you all know, as the software in the AutoSlide system evolves, updates, and changes, there might be some minor discrepancies between the functionality of the dip switch and what the label on the front of the AutoSlide system says. So when you're trying to figure out what dip switch settings work best for your application, always consult the online installation manual, which is gonna be linked in this video's description. It's going to always provide you with the most up-to-date definitions of each dip switch. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. The only dip switches that we've covered so far have been dip switch one for controlling your handing and programming your opening width, and dip switch three for programming your pet mode opening width. In addition to those, a couple of really handy dip switches are dip switch two, five, six, and seven. So dip switch two is gonna be your slam sut. Basically that provides a little bit of an extra power boost, a little bit of an oomph to get it all the way closed into a door's weather seal. This is vital on doors that have a tight seal. So if you don't have two on and the door goes to close, but it can't close fully into the seal because there's too much resistance, it's gonna trigger the safety reversal. It might think there's a finger or a child or some sort of obstruction stuck in that closing path. It's gonna open the door back up and you're gonna see some weird behavior. Dip switch two will help to negate this. Dip switch five is a little bit of a different effect. So instead of increasing power, it reduces power to the motor by 25%. This is going to help it to open a little bit slower. It's also gonna help if you have an elite system that's a little bit too strong for your door, turning on dip switch five will reduce that motor strength. Dip switch six is going to be our app dip switch. We're gonna cover that in just a second, but basically dip switch six controls and enables the app. It basically overrides the existing physical settings with the app settings. If you don't have six on, then the app is not going to work. But just note that you need to have a system that is Bluetooth enabled for the app to work with the unit. And finally, dip switch seven is going to be extra power. So this is gonna provide an extra power boost, not just at the end of the closing, like slam sut, it's actually gonna be extra power all the way throughout through the opening and closing motions. That's gonna get that's perfect for heavy doors, hurricane impact doors, where you just need that extra strength from the motor to make sure that the door slides smoothly. A couple of extra dip switches in there are dip switch four and dip switch eight. So dip switch four is going to be secure pet mode. It's a bit of a specialized dip switch that disables outside sensor when the system is in pet mode. And then dip switch eight is beeper. Basically it emits an audible loud beep whenever the system is activated to open or close or whenever the system 
changes modes. So now in this next section of video, we're gonna cover how to set up and configure your dip switch settings for the AutoSlide app. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cover how to program this system or at least get it prepped for programming using the AutoSlide app or with the AutoSlide app. So I'm gonna start with my system powered off and my door slightly open. So I'm gonna have all of my dip switches in the off position and I'm going to turn on only dip switch number six, which is gonna be the sixth one from the left or the third one from the far right. Now, if you already have your system powered on and you turn on dip switch six, it is not going to take effect. Dip switch six must be on when the system is powered on for the app to work properly. So make sure you have dip switch six turned on before you power on the system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and power our system on real quick. And then I'm looking to see which direction it goes. It should start to close all the way, which it is, that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it close and do its thing. Now, if it had started to open, it means it's oriented the wrong way. So I would have powered it off, reversed dip switch one, so flipped it to the on position, and then powered the system back on. And then it should start to close the door. Remember, whenever you first power the system on, it should always start to close the door right away. So right now, the door is closed. I have dip switch six on. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the front of my control panel. To do this, there are three tabs on the back side right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick my screwdriver in, push on these tabs. And just like that, we are good to go. So this button right here is going to be your Bluetooth pairing button. If you do not see a solid white light, that means that it is not yet ready to pair. So if this happens to you, just hold down the Bluetooth button like I am right now. After a few seconds, it should start to flash multiple colors like it just did, and then the system will recycle and you'll get a solid white light. Once you see this solid white light, you are good to go for pairing. So this is actually covered in a different video, which I'll link down in the description, and it will walk you through the steps on how to program your opening with and configure your settings using the AutoSlide app. Alrighty, so now that our system is programmed and configured and ready to go, we can go ahead and move on to pairing our remotes, our buttons, and our sensors. So in this video, we're just gonna cover these wall buttons here. We have different videos for other sensors if you look at our channel, but two of these wall buttons are included on ever, in every single auto slide, multi-drive, or auto swing kit. These buttons are capacitive touch. I've already gone ahead and put a battery in this one. So to pair, any wireless device that's an auto slide device except for the tags to the system it's the same process i'm going to press the sensor learn button one time and a red light will come on i'm going to activate my button you'll see this flashes and then i'm going to activate it again you have to wait a couple seconds between activation and then you'll see this red light turned off next to sensor learn so i'm going to go ahead and press my button and it activates the door to open and it's that simple. So same process for any remote control, motion sensor, or wall button that's auto slide brand. Sensor learn one time, press your button, wait a couple of seconds, press your button again, and then it's good to go. Now, if you'll notice when I activate this button, it is activating the outside sensor input. And you can tell that because it's lighting up right there. So when it comes to locking systems, this is especially important. You wanna make sure you put your outside button outside, your inside button inside. Sometimes these buttons will be configured to both be outside. If that's the case, it's really easy to change. So at the bottom of these buttons, there is a little screw right there. Just go ahead and take that screw out. And then once you do that, you should be able to take the back off of these buttons. So I'll go ahead and do that right here. And now, as you can see, there is a little switch on the board 
Now this one in particular says master and slave. Sometimes they say inside or outside. Sometimes there'll be three different options, inside, outside, pet, or inside, outside, stack. But usually there's always going to be an inside and an outside. So I can have this set to master for inside or slave for outside. So I just went ahead and flipped my switch to master. And as you can see, if I activate it now, it is activating the inside sensor input. So that means that this button is now a master activation tool. So that means if it's in red mode or green mode or pet mode, if I press this button, it's gonna go ahead and open up the door. And every single autoslide sensor, for the most part, has one of these sensor channel switches. So just make sure that your button or your sensor is configured correctly, depending on where they're gonna put it inside or outside your home. All right, so in the last step with our auto slide installation, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover on, which is the finishing touch. Now, one quick tip is when you have this cover on here, you wanna make sure that your brush bristles are kind of away from the motor to make sure it doesn't tangle up. It's not really gonna tangle up too much if you have it in there, but just in case, go ahead and slide your brush bristle away from the end that has the motor. So now leave a little bit of space there for your end cap um, tab to go onto because this groove is going to be on top of this tab on the end cap right here, if you can see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by aligning the tabs with the groove. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one side first. So it's on right there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna snap it in. And now I'm just gonna go from bottom up. So just like that. And with that, your auto slide system is done, installed, programmed, paired, and ready to go. So thank you so much for joining me today in covering an auto slide example installation. If you have any questions, please refer to the links down in the description for more information on installing the system, or don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. Thank you so much. Have a good day.